Aiden, thank you so much. He says there's lots of reviews saying equals don't matter in gaming. Can you explain why that's untrue? As I'm confused, do you think giving i5 8 p cores cannibalizes the i7 i9 sales? Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Reviews that say e-cores don't matter in gaming are from people who run too many scripted benchmarks and don't actually use a computer. Um, they matter in several regards. First of all, do you run benchmarks for a living? Because the minute you have a real computer that has web browsers and Discord and you're listening to music and you have game launchers in the test tray and antivirus is running and, and Windows updates are in the background, you're not just gaming. You're gaming plus whatever else Windows wants to do. Now, at the very minimum, all of that other stuff can be thrown to the E cores and the game can get the 6P cores on a 13600K. Exactly. And yes, it is pulling um, i7 and i9 sales because the 13600K is the deal of this generation. Correct. Across everything AMD and Intel have released in the past year, the 13600K is full stop the best deal on the market today. Now, to say that the E cores don't help in gaming is also not true when you actually play games. And with respect to my fellow tech content creators who run script after script and automated benchmark and automated benchmark, and they press F5 to run the benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and they test Rainbow Six Siege, which is stupid because that game is eight years old. Yep. I'm testing it on an i9 13900K. Oh, look what. It is. Well, when you do the scripted stuff, you don't get feedback on. But the scripted the stuff experience. is running in an area and position Correct. of the game that is not challenging. Correct. Having a script, even those content creators who don't use the built-in benchmark in Cyberpunk, which it has a built-in benchmark. It does. It isn't really a very good one, to be honest with you. It's repeatable, but it's not very good. I have seen, and I will not name them, content creators who have the car drive from one end of the city to the other, down the street, at night with all the lights on. Yep. That's better than the built-in benchmark. That's not the game. It's no. nice that it runs well there. Yep. Go get into combat. Go engage groups of enemies in one of the missions. Yeah. Don't tell me E-Cores aren't used for gaming. I know they're used for gaming. I have seen them used for gaming. But they typically are not used for gaming when you're running scripted benchmarks whether they're built-in benchmarks or benchmarks you have to run easy. It's one of the great failures of CPU benchmarking. In order to run a reasonable number of benchmarks in a reasonable number of time, you have to take shortcuts. Now, we have run, for example, Battlefield 2042. We have. Where you get into a full online multiplayer match and you play it for 20, 25 minutes. Now do that three times. Now do that three times on how many different CPUs. Mm -hmm. That is extremely time consuming. Yes, it is. Now those numbers are not as directly comparable as a scripted benchmark like some creators in Battlefield 1 loaded up the first level and walked forward for 60 seconds and called that a benchmark. I won't say their name. Some of you know who that is. Freaking ridiculous. Um, when we did Battlefield 1 benchmarking, we tested multiplayer conquest, 64 player online, because that's where you actually get the load and that's where it matters. Mm -hmm. I mean, the single player runs fine. I mean, for Pete's sake, the single player run on I3. So. The e-cores are used for gaming, but they are not showing up in the kind of benchmarks that you typically see in YouTube videos and websites. Um, and it's exceptionally hard to show. I have shown footage of it. Mm -hmm. I have shown footage 
of 60 to 70% CPU usage in an i3 uh, and an i5 13600K. All the P cores and all the hyper threading is not 70% on that chip. You're in the E cores. Spider Man Remastered will do it. Yep. Uh, Spider Man Remastered, uh, Hitman 3, um, Battlefield 2042, The Division 2, not the benchmark, but real life gameplay. Real life gameplay in Division 2 will do it. Yeah, they say the thing about scripted benchmarks is that they're standardized. Yep. Gameplay is erratic. Yes, your mileage will vary. You don't need the extra cores 100% of the time in every situation. When you spawn in a battlefield, then you're running and you're hiding in the building and then you run over this way, it doesn't need it. And then you're engaged in combat, there's four people around you and then the explosions go off and the tank drives by and you, you need it for, for, for 15 seconds. It spikes. But that's the moment when you need it to get better 1% lows and get the game to be responsive. Who cares if you have some frame spikes while you're spawning into the level? Where you care is when you're in a gunfight. Correct. Funny that. So you don't need all those cores. The whole more cores for gaming thing, you need the cores very intermittently. Very few games will load up all the cores all the time. Like The Division 2. Running down the street, four cores is fine. It works great. Standard combat. Four cores is fine. Six to eight cores is better. Dark Zone. Multiplayer, joining up with people, engaging large groups of enemies at the same time. I've seen 16 cores being used in that game. But just for that, you know, you play for an hour and you're using 16 cores for three minutes. Hmm. How do you benchmark that and, and make it standardized between CPUs? Yeah. You can't. No. I mean, you could if you spent all day benchmarking that one game it doesn't make any financial sense to do so. No, it doesn't. So, yeah. Roman again, thank you. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well.